Hi guys, Mr. Sonnenberg here. Today we're going to be talking about shell structures. So this is topic one in your textbook and what we're doing is we're piggybacking off of uh, what frame structures which we talked about in the last screencast. So this is for Science 7 students that are studying structures and forces. So this is unit four in our textbook. So what are shell structures? Well, shell structures, uh, these are going to be structures that are going to keep their shape and support their loads but they're not going to have a frame so they can do this without a frame and they also don't need a solid mass of material inside so in the frame structures we had load bearing walls on the exterior say in a home or in the frame structure like the bike we had uh, rigid rigid joints and to help support the the weight and support the load coming down on it and we also had partition walls in the house that were going to help hold the house up and increase the strength of the frame structure but with these shell structures we don't have anything inside and they're they're going to uh, they don't have a frame so they're in the absence of a frame and they keep their shape so what they use is a thin carefully shaped outer layer of material and that's what's going to provide the strength so this is the second line here that I'm talking about uh, they so that thin carefully shaped so uh, that word carefully shaped is going to be important as we move through this you're going to because uh, we're going to talk about some of the problems with shell structures so what happens is the the forces are spread throughout the whole structure so every part of the structure is going to support a small part of the load okay so you can read that right here so every part is going to support a part of the load but it's just a very small component okay so just a small part, but every part, okay, is going to support a small load. All right. So here's a picture of uh, it's called Hagia Sophia. It was it's called the Blue Mosque, and it's in Istanbul, Turkey. And I actually got to go there with the travel club, and I got to go in this huge structure. It was an amazing structure, but it has a shell structure. If you take a look up top here there's various shell structures and it was just an absolutely amazing structure I'm so glad I got to see it but uh, that's one shell structure so there's not going to be anything within that shell structure taking up space uh, of course this also uses frame structures and shell structures in combination but let's take a look at the snail down here okay it's shell structure as well it's going to be hollow on the inside and every part of this shell structure uh, is going to support a small amount of the load and then we have another picture over here as well that you can take a look at. So just some examples just to get an idea of what uh, shell structures are. Uh, we have an igloo, we have a turtle shell, okay? So obviously the inside of the shell is going to be hollow and that uh, shell shape uh, or that circular shape is going to uh, it's going to be supported so small pieces of that are going to support every part of that shell is going to support a small amount of the load okay and then we have a pop can here and then eggs as well okay so the eggs have uh, we're, we're not looking at the interior there we're looking at the shell so not what it's filled in we're just looking at the shell the egg shell so it's hollow in the inside so we can actually fill it with things if we want and so there's the yolk and the egg weight on the inside of these eggs right here but the shell is going to, uh, again, it's going to be very thin layer supporting that. So shell structures. So uh, there's different types of shell structures. Okay. So we also have flexible structures. Okay. So flexible shell structures are going to be things like your hot air balloon. Now my wife has been asking for years for me to hop in a hot air balloon with her and fly away and. Uh, I'm very grounded, so I'm a big chicken, and she's a big daredevil, so I've yet to go in one. But it's hollow on the inside, so what we do is we heat, and we increase the particles of the air on the interior, and it helps to uh, blow, and then we condense the air by uh, eliminating the heat source. So air balloons are quite uh, interesting. They actually can take some components out of the uh, heat and temperature unit we just completed as well. But if we look at this, there's another flexible structure right up here okay in the parachute another thing my wife does that I won't again here and then also in balloons as well okay so very thin layer a very thin layer and every part of this hot air balloon right here every part 
is going to carry a small amount of the load. Okay, I'll just write that down for you. Of the load. Now, the load, remember, is that force being pushed upon it. The shell structures, though, okay, uh, they're completely empty. So we're just looking at the outer shell. Like I said with the egg, we're looking at the outer shell. So picture of an egg up top here, okay, uh, or not an egg, sorry, a shell. <laughs> But they're completely empty, so they make good containers. Um, so if we take a look here, there's a shell structure, and it makes a good container to pack up our food. And then there's many other shell structures that we can use as well. Think of the Tupperware. Uh, that's a shell structure, okay? And we can actually use that structure to keep food as well. So we have some problems with these shell structures though and so I've color coordinated them uh, red, uh, red, blue, green and purple just to help you uh, to see the difference but uh, any tiny weakness okay any tiny weakness in in these structures uh, it can cause the whole structure to fail okay so that whole structure can fail just with one tiny little weakness which is obviously a problem. So one minor flaw in this whole structure could, could become weak and it could fail. Uh, the second point that we'll look at right here, uh, when the shell is created from a hot or a moist material, if there's in the cooling process, if it's uneven, it can cause some weaknesses in, in various parts. Um, and then when there's pushing or pulling on them, then we'll obviously see those weaknesses come out. So. Uh, heating and cooling, uh, if we have uneven cooling, it's going to cause some problems. Uh, also, flat materials, uh, we can't form. Uh, flat materials are hard to form into rounded shell shaped. So it's tough to take a flat material and form it into a round shape. We can do that with wood by getting it really wet and then we bend it and we, we tie it down and brace it and then we let it dry and eventually it'll dry into that shape but it's extremely difficult to take these flat materials and to form them into round shell shapes. And then the last is uh, if we were to uh, assemble say the flexible materials um, so say your parachute and your hot air balloon and such uh, we have to make sure that it's a very precise uh, process. So we have to make sure that seams are strong because if they're not, um, say for example we're parachuting, if it's not a strong seam and we have some imperfections and that can cause some uh, very serious impl implications and problems for us. So these are some of the problems. I'd like you to know these problems of the shell structures. Now if we mix and match uh, both frame Okay, frame and shell structures. Okay, I'll just put an and sign. We take a look at the football helmet, and as I speak, the Super Bowl's on, so it's kind of interesting. There's some relevance here, but the shell structure is going to be the uh, outer part of the helmet that is going to protect the head, and then we have a frame structure right here that is going to protect the face. So we actually mix and we match and we can use those frame structures for and shell structures together. So another example of this mix and match is the airplane. Okay, so we have the shell structure and the frame structure. Well, in order to build the plane, we need it needs to have a frame and its structure. And then what we do on the exterior, and you can look at its nice rounded, sleek appearance and shape. Well, that's going to be for aerodynamics, and that's going to help the plane to fly with the least resistance possible. But this frame is going to hold its rigid shape so that it, uh, it's very strong and, uh, and durable. All right, guys, so that's, uh, that's shell structures, and uh, hopefully this has helped you get a better understanding. I urge you to play, pause, rewind if you miss anything, take down notes. Uh, Rewatch videos to uh, help uh, build your your knowledge in, with the concepts and and the material being taught. And if you have any questions, please bring them to me at the next class. Uh, I'd be more than willing to help you. And that's what these screencasts are for. So hopefully this has helped. That's shell structures. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See ya.